Now let's talk about the minimum obstruction clearance altitude, or what is known as an MOCA on an airway. And to do that, let's take a look at this airway segment near Grand Junction, Colorado, and notice it has an MEA of 15,500 feet, but below the MEA you also see 14,800 feet with an asterisk in front of it. Well, that 14,800 feet is the minimum obstruction clearance altitude, or MOCA. And that's the clearance altitude, minimum obstruction clearance altitude is the lowest published altitude on an airway segment. And it guarantees you obstruction clearance of 1,000 feet above the highest obstacle in non-mountainous terrain and 2,000 feet above the highest obstacle in mountainous terrain. Now, most of the eastern United States is designated as non mountainous, and most of the western United States and Alaska are designated as mountainous. You get more clearance in mountainous terrain due to the fact that your altimeter may not be as accurate as in flat country due to the winds and pressure changes. Now, this obstacle clearance is assured as long as you stay on the airway. The MOCA applies to the entire segment, but only guarantees VOR coverage within 22 nautical miles of a VOR. Now the problem is that if you're beyond 22 nautical miles of a VOR and beyond the usable VOR navigation signal, if you're using VORs you're, for navigation, you're not going to be guaranteed of staying on that airway and you won't have course guidance. So if you're using VORs for uh, navigation and relying on them, when you're more than 22 nautical miles from the station, you have to climb to the MEA for the route segment that you are flying. So the minimum obstruction clearance altitude is not normally a usable altitude. Think of the minimum obstruction clearance altitude as kind of an emergency altitude. It does give you some idea of the terrain beneath you, though. Now let's look at this example, the minimum en route altitude on Victor 187 south of Grand Junction, Colorado and north of Herm is 15,000 feet. And one reason is the VOR stations are a long way apart and another reason is there are these little hills around here called the Rocky Mountains that partially block the signal. So if you had a problem, say icing, or the engine wasn't putting out full power, and you were not able to maintain the minimum en route altitude, it's very nice to know that you don't have to start worrying about the ground until you get to the minimum obstruction clearance altitude uh, of 12,000 100 feet in this case, indicated by the asterisk. Now let's look at the route further south of Herm, and the MOCA here is 12,400 feet. But here we're way more than 22 nautical miles from the VORs, so how could you fly at the MOCA? Easy. If you have GPS navigation, you can still use this applicable MOCA even if you're a long way from VOR stations. Now, let's assume you're flying along and a controller clears you off of an airway. Well, if you're cleared to fly off an airway direct to somewhere, you'll be assured the same minimum obstruction clearance that you would get if you were on an airway. That's because, except for takeoff and landing, those altitudes of 1,000 feet AGL in flat areas and 2,000 feet AGL in mountainous areas are the minimum altitudes for IFR flight, period. So whenever a controller gives you a clearance, even off of an airway, they have to take into consideration that you have to be at least as high as a minimum altitude for IFR flight.